Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Cam Christo and this is another Mayo and Taxes 3.0 Basic Concepts video. I'm going to do a series of these. They will come out pretty quick fire, I expect, over the next couple of days. Uh, they're going to just touch on the, the surface level of a few features that lots of people are now experiencing now that we're in early alpha and how you should generally, in my opinion, interact with them. I'm by no means an expert. Um, I don't know everything about how all of these things work, so all of this is subject to change. I'm likely to re-release these videos later on as I get more information. If you think I've got something wrong, put it in the comments. But without further ado, let's talk about tax. Tax is one of the two key ways in which you gain income in Mayo and Taxes 3.0. Uh, and it's the only way, I believe, that you earn uh, manpower. So you can use to fill up your armies. The way that you tax provinces is by having, firstly, you have to core the province, and then secondly, you have these buildings. The way that it works is that um, they've got rid of the vanilla building system, it's replaced by infrastructure, different video on that topic, and when this, for example, Toledo here, has a building called land tax low, what that means is that we apply a tax on all production from land, functioning as a tax on production income. The tax largely targets rural population, especially the peasantry. So because we've got that built here, we'll get a certain amount of land tax from Toledo. And land tax, as you can see in the little admin symbol next to its name, costs admin points. Every year, it will cost a certain amount of admin dip or military mana in order to maintain your taxes. The amount of mana that it takes is affected by various things, and that's different from tax to tax. These are the manpower taxes. These are the non-manpower taxes. Non-manpower taxes get you money. Manpower taxes get you manpower. Pretty simple. So, for example, we have levies here as well. The cost is increased by up to five times its default amount by local autonomy. So Toledo has 47% local autonomy. So I imagine, I'm not certain it's linear, but I imagine we're getting about 2.5 times the normal cost in military power to tax this province. You can uh, assign taxes with the building macro builder um, by clicking on, so let's say we wanted to put... Um, levies high in a bunch of buildings. We could build these like this, and you could min-max your taxes like that if you want. Uh, there is, in the future, I'm sure there will be conversations to be had about exactly which taxes are the most efficient and how you should use them and things like that, but for now, I strongly recommend you use the Dipl the um, delegation tax code 106 decision. What this will do is the it will run a script which looks at all your provinces and decides how to tax them. Now this is a really good thing because let's say you have an autonomy map that looks something like this, which you are very likely to do at the beginning of the game. It will cost a lot more to tax Seville than Toledo. So you would need, if you're doing it manually, to, to set it up. If you wanted to get the most bang for your buck, you would need to set it up such that you were specifically taxing Seville a bit less and Toledo a bit more. And as you can see, that's actually what's happening because of this automatic script. There are no taxes being levied in Seville right now. None of these buildings exist at all, whereas Toledo has a bunch of them. Um, there are downsides of that potentially. I need to look into this, but it seems like that's going to mean the core of your country is going to be you know, more drained because, and this is a very important thing about taxes, you're actually taking money away. This is not magic money that just appears like in uh, like in the previous versions of Mayan taxes or in vanilla EU4. When you apply a land tax, people in this province are losing money. You're taking it off them. So don't always just do the most tax that you can possibly afford. Each year, if you don't turn it off, and I'll show you how you could turn it off in a second, you will get this event called the Burden of Taxation. And this shows you how much you're spending in each monarch point and I believe it takes these as it fires the event. If you hover over you can see how you're spending it. So we're spending admin power on land tax. 21.832 admin is being spent on land tax. Obligations, we've got some rent dues, some noble dues, some property maintenance being spent on diplo and obligations, some levies and some noble levies for mill. Which tax you're spending you don't need to worry about too too much Admin is what will be spent to get you manpower. The other two will get you money. Admin is what's, sorry, mill is what's meant to get you manpower. The other two are money. Admin is basically taxation that's being done by the state. Dip is being used on taxation that is stuff your elites, your estates owe to the state. So as you can see, it's like rent dues and noble dues and things that are due to the state from the elites. That's why that's costing um, diplomatic mana. So how do you use the auto, sorry, I haven't paused. How do you use the uh, tax code? You click this button, delegate tax code, and then you have some choices. 
if you're just watching the video just to Christo tell me what to do, all you want to do is all states, automatic, yearly event enabled, leave these default, hit delegate. And then see what the situation is in the next year. Were you not getting enough manpower? Maybe you need to put more military points into this. Were you not getting enough money? Then maybe you need to increase one of these two. Uh, you increase these very, you change these, all of these very simply, you just click on it. So provinces, all states, or selected, or non overseas, or all states. Do you want it to re delegate? Do you want it to rerun the calculation once a year? Hint, yes. Um, you can click this button. So now it's only manual, now it's automatic. Do you want a yearly event telling you how much it's cost you in mana each year? I recommend leaving this on just in case something goes wild and it starts increasing or decreasing or you, you want to know about it, but you can disable that. Do you want to spend twice as much admin power? Open this up, hit plus 10 twice, now you've got 40. Excellent, then hit back. We're back here. I recommend leaving it at the default to start with simply because I don't know what's optimal and I'm sure you probably don't either. So just see how this works. This is fine, generally speaking, and we can uh, we can worry about optimizing as we all become more familiar with the mod. If you need more manpower, bump this up is the, the one thing that's more, more likely, I would say, that you might want to have to do. Um, that's more or less that on how to delegate this. You can make it only in selected provinces. So if you selected all but a few provinces and then you manually set things in those individual selected provinces, that might be one thing you wanted to do. If you don't know how to select things, check out the next video where I'll talk about that. That, very briefly, is your introduction to tax in Mayo and Taxes. If you think I missed something, please tell me in the comments. I will have a pinned comment which will contain any mistakes I made or anything people, anything people have added. And I will use that to improve on the next version of this video, which will come out at some point in the future. The short version is use the tax delegator. It's better at it than you are, almost certainly. But it's nice to understand how it works and that you can tweak it manually if you really decide that you want to. You may notice that some taxes are unavailable. That's because some taxes require specific things set up in your bureaucracy and your uh, state and elites screen. We will worry about that in a future video. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope this was helpful. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.